see everybody. Um, had two scrimmages, uh, and it, this week we have a clinic on Saturday, so we're going to have three practices, or now two practices. Uh, but the two scrimmages, been really excited about the team. Probably two of the most physical scrimmages that I've been a part of um, on both sides of the ball. There's been some good on both sides of the ball, so that's always good to see. Um, and then it, it's great to see some young guys having uh, really good springs. Um, the three DBs, the three mid-years, we call them the triplets with uh, Sanford and, and B.J. Jordan and, and uh, Chapman. Um, really proud of those guys. I mean, they're, they're going to be great football players. I don't know exactly when. Uh, we'll see if their body's ready to play this fall, but really happy with those guys. And then, um, you know, guys like Cam Valdez, uh, Steve Linton, uh, Miles Cole, just scrimmage-wise have really showed up. So, like where we're at, um, this is going to be a good week for us. Uh, next week will be a heavy Tuesday and then a light rest of the week, and then we'll get ready to play really fast on um, that Saturday at the spring game. So, with that, I will take any questions. Coach, what do you, how do you feel your quarterbacks have played so far this year? Really good. I mean, you know, you've got two guys that – uh, I expect to develop and play on Sundays, you know, and, and uh, they, they've played really well off of each other. Um, they've, they've had great springs. Um, when you see them physically, you know, Shuck's 230 plus, you know, Barron's 215. Um, so, you know, just body-wise, they're in really good, a really good spot. Um, but been happy with both of those guys. You know, I feel we can go out and, and uh, you know, no matter who's in there, we're in really good position. Coach, is Rayshad practicing right now? No, he's got a uh, – he's got a – we don't know exactly exactly where he's at. Um, it's like a sports hernia. Um, he's going to Vail uh, next week. Uh, kind of the experts with some of the hip and sp the sports hernias and let them uh, check it out. Um, he started out in the spring. Um, it, it was something that was bothering him in the bowl game. Um, but he was able to work through it. We thought we were in a good place, but, you know, he strained it again. And um, he's played so many reps, there's no reason to, to not know exactly what it is before we, you know, push through. Now, that's the same thing that you were talking about down there in December. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, he, he went to Vail and got some uh, – did some different things, got some shots and uh, felt a lot better. Uh, we got, I guess, probably four practices in. And, it bothering him again and again. You know, he's a guy that I think he's five or six years in. Um, so we want to make sure that he's in, in a good position. You know, the from our doctors to their doctors looking at MRIs and everything, we feel like he's going to be ready to go uh, for fall camp. It's just what procedure they're going to do, uh, if, if any. After the first two scrimmages, what have you seen from the D line that has shown you some some encouragement for this year? Man, I'll tell you the guy that, uh, you know, he played 25 reps in the, in the bowl game, uh, Duda Banks. Um, really pleased with him. Um, I mean, every day he's really shown up. Um, he's playing at a high level. You know, uh, Boog's going to play great. <clears throat> I'm also excited with our ends. Uh, we're really deep um, at those outside linebackers. When you're talking about Miles Cole, when you're talking about uh, Steve Linton, Harvey Dyson, uh, Charles Esters had a really, really good spring. Um, so excited about the D-line. Quincy uh, had had a hip flexor, came back today. It was good to see him back out there. Um, feel really good about him. What have you seen from the growth from the first scrimmage to the second scrimmage in comparison to last year? Um, I think the biggest things are depth, you know. Last year you would go out and your ones, there was a distinct difference between your ones, your twos, and your threes. Um, you know, I think as a whole, especially when you don't have Tony Bradford out there, as a whole, um, I feel really good about having two groups in there and you're really not going to, I don't see a, see a drop off. You know, we're going to have the ability. You know, last year we had to play Tony and, and Boog so many reps. I mean, those guys played uh, 100 plus reps more than anybody else in our conference in the defensive line. And you're not supposed to have to do that in the D-line. And so I think you're going to see Quincy have really take a step there to help. Uh, Duda has taken that step. I'm really excited about him. And then when Trey's fully back, you know, it's 
soon as we feel really good about that ACL, I mean, he's over a year. As soon as we feel good about that guy, you know, I think we'll be 5 B. That's not where we were last year. And so that's going to make a big difference for us. Uh, you mentioned picking things up, slowing things down. What does that look like in spring when the season's still so far away and managing tempo? Uh, this year? Um, you know, like, like today we took some, uh, some of the older guys didn't take as many reps or some of the younger guys could, you know, uh, Cole Spencer and Rusty Stats and Dennis Wilburn, you know, they're all old, you know, they're five and six year guys. And so they don't need as much. Boog has not had as much this spring. Um, so we're really trying to get the young guys a lot of reps. Uh, but those guys know when they're in there that they're playing at Red Raider speed. I mean, they're, they're playing at a tempo and, and uh, you know, have been excited to what those guys are doing. But young guys have really stepped up. I know you've spoken about him a lot so far this year, but with the NFL draft still right around the corner, Tyree Wilson seems to keep climbing up draft boards. What's made him, in your opinion, maybe stand out against an edge rushing class that seems really, really talented this year? And why do you think he remains to be are he probably the number one guy at that position? You know, I think his, his size and length, you know, he has the best size and length out of anybody at that position. I think if you look at his motor, um, you know, what he does with and, and the way he can anchor the, an edge, but I don't know if there's many guys that are at that position that run to the ball away from the ball, you know, where the ball's running away from him. How many plays he made, how many tackles for a loss he had chasing the ball like that. And so I think that's a, a huge part of why he's moving up. You know, he's got such a great motor. And Coach, um, with Coach McCaslin in town the last couple weeks, have you got to meet him or touch base with him yet? Yeah, you know, he came to practice on Saturday, he came to our scrimmage. Uh, we've talked a couple times on the phone, um, and, and then he got to, you know, talk to him at scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, it was great to see him out there, you know. Uh, I think I think you'll see more of that, you know, and, um, you know just uh, kind of like who uh, his team wants to become. I think both of us are the same. We're going to have a tough team basketball and football-wise, and so I think we'll pick each other's brains on how to do that. How is Josiah Pierre's position switch come along? Really good. I'm really, you know, where Josiah brings something uh, that the other guys don't have yet is because, uh, one, I think he's got some natural pass rush ability, but then him playing on the edge last year and being with CJ so much and working pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. When we blitz our linebackers and we do a lot of it, he has been the best guy at that. You know, he just, um, whether he's coming from depth or he's at the line of scrimmage. And then we have some packages to where we play a bear to where that linebacker walks up off the edge and he's, done that you know every rep he took last year was at that position and so uh, there's some things that he's really ahead of the curve now where he's continuing to grow is whenever he is you know we're playing a base defense and just getting lined up at that inside backer position but been really happy with him I mean you could see some stuff that um, he's going to be able to really help us with especially I mean you got to pressure the quarterback. You know, you got to hit the quarterback. You got to pressure the quarterback. That's how, of course, you get sacks, but it's also how you create turnovers. And I think he's going to be able to help us do that. Coach, how's the, how's the rest of that group coming along? I know you said that you need some depth there. Yeah, good. You know, I've been happy with Math Matthews. I mean, he's played. You know, he played last year for us as a rotational guy, so I've been uh, happy with him. Ben Roberts for the young guys probably had the best spring for uh, young guys. I mean, um, I think. He's r really coming on. Um, you know, the biggest thing, we, we do a lot of stuff on defense. And um, so just being able to, to get lined up, to play fast, is what those guys are continuing to work on. Because, you know, we want to install as much as we can. Uh, we did it in winter in, uh, you know, uh, football school. We're doing it now in spring football. We'll do it again in the summer, and then we'll do it again in camp. And so, you know, that's four times before we play a game that we've got our install in. And um, been really, Ben has really done a good job. I thought Ty Connor had a good day today. Um, he had uh, a much better scrimmage, scrimmage two, than he had scrimmage one. And then uh, Wesley Smith is a kid, you know, uh, didn't redshirt two freshmen, uh, Wesley Smith and Josiah Pierre. Wesley just kind of gets football. You know, he's not the biggest guy. Um, he's really strong, but he's not the, you know, height-wise, not the biggest guy, but um, real physical kid and just gets football. And so 
been happy with him. Got time for about two more. And how quickly will Jacob uh, work back in when he's ready to go? You know, all those guys, we feel great about June. We feel great about those guys going through. They, uh, the majority of those guys, uh, Tyler Owens, Jacob, uh, Tony Bradford, they all had uh, appointments uh, to whatever week they are. And, you know, they're running. Everything starts up and, uh, you know, what they can do physically. Um, he'll be back. When we go through our summer uh, football school, he'll be with the ones and, and be ready to go. Um, we don't see anybody uh, as of right now, you know, of course, knock on wood because we've got practices. Um, we don't have anybody right now that won't be full go, ready to go in, in June. And back on corners for a moment, with Ray shot, with Ray shot out, who is getting the first team reps? Man, I'm That's glad fun. you asked that because I, I talked about young guys, the three young guys. Man, I, I definitely want to talk about this guy, is Mo Horn. Um, Horn has really uh, had a phenomenal spring. I, if we went and played right now and you said, Coach, we're going to play three corners and we we're all healthy, it'd be shod. It'd be Malik and it would be Horn. And he has had a really, really good spring. I mean, um, you know, it, we knew it was all there and everything, but he, he pulled his hamstring. He would have played in the bowl game and pulled his hamstring going into the game, like the last uh, couple practices. Been happy with him. So it's right now when we go with our ones, Malik's on one side and uh, Moe's on the other. You know what? Uh, just seeing the kid grow, you know. I, I saw him take steps. He actually he played a really good job in the bowl game for last year. That's why it was so important getting those young guy practices that we did in preparation. Uh, he didn't came into the spring, and you just see him taking the steps. So my expectations for him right now is to keep getting better day by day, keep being the brand, keep putting those extra things that we can put in our toolbox, and let's put it together. So the expectations is for him to just keep taking those steps, and I, I think we're all going to like what we see out of him. He's doing really good for us. I know guys like Boog and Tony aren't getting many reps in right now, but first, I guess, how big is it that those two decided to return for this upcoming season? And second, what's it like having those guys as leaders for your D-line? I mean, well, you know, when you talk about Hutch and, and Tony, uh, great leaders, not only for this football team, but in the community and even back home where those guys are from. Um, it was really big to have those guys come back more because it showed us what Coach McGuire is doing here. and. Showed us why they love the defense, but what I loved about those guys coming back is that they committed, they bought in, and they want to see the program go to you know higher and higher and um, different limbs. Uh, what I love is they want to leave a legacy, and how you leave a legacy is not only what you do on the field, but how the impact you do on these young guys. So when you do come back, you can see little touches that you put in, and they're a representation of all of us. Even though Tony hasn't been practicing, I guess, how involved has he been? In I mean, he's, he's been great. I mean, he's in every meeting. You know, those guys call player meetings. Um, they're teaching them not only to be football players, but be students of the game, as you can say. Um, and I think that's the biggest impact. Um, I'm excited to have both of them back, no doubt about it. With, that, uh, with them being able to have a break and not be able to get as many reps and letting these young stars shine, Correct. Who are who are some of the the younger other younger players that are making an impact for, in your mind? Uh, when you look at it, uh, obviously Duda. You know, he's a guy that's taking reps with the ones, and I think he's approaching it and understanding what it takes to be a defensive tackler here at Texas Tech. Uh, when you look at uh, also look at uh, Quincy, he's a transfer that just came. Q just got him back today, and I mean, automatically you see the impact that he can have. Um, so I'm really excited about him. Another guy that, when you talk about Blake Burris, he's a, he was a walk-on for us. Um, made the transition to defensive line in the spring of last year. And to see him this spring, I mean, it's crazy to see how much better he didn't got. And we're just going to keep taking those steps day by day. So what have you seen differently from last year's spring to this year's spring and the growth that they're in on the D-line? It's the depth. Um, that's the biggest thing right now. Uh, when you look at it, having a, a freshman that comes in like Jaden Cofield, that literally he's here, this kid's supposed to be in high school, and now I'm, I love it because now I get the speed to process of He's doing everything great academically, but understanding the mindset. That's usually what it is with a defensive tackle, understanding the mindset to make the jump from high school to college and the physical play, every other position, and they can shy away from contact. We got to love it and welcome it.
Oh, uh, I look. Uh, what, what I it was really fun because uh, we got to watch them against a common opponent. So last year ULM played against Texas, and I wanted to see and do a graph of how the defense tackle play here and how he play. I think what he adds to this is um, another bigger body, real strong at the point of attack. He wants to be physical, but as a pass rusher, I think he adds you some quickness that um, we're gonna we're gonna be welcome to it, and I love it that he's here. And what's Blake's uh, Blake Burris's skill set? What's, Man, what's he he's six five, three hundred pounds, yeah. long arms. Uh, it's just seeing the growth. I mean, you know, one thing about my group, I'm able to push these boys more than other coaches because they know I love them and they know it's real. And the fun thing about a kid like that, you see the growth and the aspirations on. But his skill set is when you 6'5", 300, just like Duda, man, they get real fun to coach. They get real fun to coach. With the two, prior, with the two scrimmages already in the books, what have you seen from the offensive line that, that has pushed your defensive line to a new level this year? Oh, man, come on now. You had Cole, I call him Thor. I left, I left, I left guard, I call him Thor. Hey, and, you know, it's good to see him in it. I mean, golly, man, this kid worked his tail off for a year and they tough. Um, I think Rusty has a different uh, dimension as a center, a wider body, smart kid that, that then played a lot of snaps, man. So you get to see how different guys are. But uh, I think our, def our offensive line, I think they got a good core. And I mean, they just keep getting better and better. I left tackle is one of the best.